ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Rochelle Travers and this is The Leader. Say goodbye to your hosepipe and paddling pool. You probably won't be seeing them for a while. As we crack out the Factor 30 to head outside and enjoy the sun for yet another heat wave, you can't help but notice that everywhere is looking very dry. In a collective groan felt across the capital, Thames Water announced restrictions would be coming in soon, following the hot weather and lack of rain this year. Water sources are looking extremely depleted. Our parks and green spaces are no longer, well, green. And there's no sign of rain on the horizon. So could London run dry? Hannah Cloak is a professor of hydrology, climate expert and natural hazards researcher at the University of Reading. So we've had a really dry July. Um, We haven't seen that for a good number of years. And it is the situation now where we have lots of our rivers at critical level and we have reservoirs drying up and we have low groundwater in our aquifers. And, you know, that is technically a drought. We can see with our own eyes, we look around the whole country and everywhere's gone brown. Uh, Everybody's gardens are suffering um, and we've got water restrictions in place. So this is a critical point. um, And what we're really worried about, I think, is what's happening over the winter. So if we now get a dry winter, we could be in a very serious drought come next summer. Um, And that's, that's what I think everybody is particularly concerned about. But right now, we're concerned about, you know, bringing on water restrictions and trying to save that water that we've got left. So are we technically in a drought? If not, what does it take to be classified as one? There's lots of different definitions of drought. As a hydrologist, I see drought as a lack of water. So definitely we are in a hydrological drought. The river levels have gone right down, you know, and, the, and, and lots of rivers are below their capacity to support the ecosystem, to support the, the fish and the other animals that are in, in that river. And that's, you know, that's very um, indicative of a drought. There are technical terms um, that the water companies use for drought and the environment agency use for drought because they have different levels, they escalate it up. And that's because they need to take different actions at different times to reduce water use or to make sure that you can put restrictions in place um, or to uh, take extra water out, uh, even if that's going to damage the the wildlife around the rivers, um, because we have to support getting drinking water to people and making sure crops can get enough water so we can grow our food. So although some places are, are, are looking very dry, they may not technically be in drought yet, although that might happen very, very soon. But as a hydrologist, I, it's a drought to me. What are some of the biggest issues with the levels of dryness we're currently seeing? When we don't have enough water in our rivers, when we don't have enough water in our soil, that can cause a whole raft of problems. And one of the most ironic problems is it actually causes more water leaks for the water companies because the the ground is cracking and drying and that often causes the the pipes to to burst and and rupture. And that's a really frustrating situation to be in when we're trying to conserve as much water as possible. Some of the wider effects are well, we have real problems growing our crops and, and some places are trying to uh, mitigate that with early harvesting. But there's going to be some damage really to, to our agricultural sector because of this. Uh, and also you know, making sure we've got enough food to, to feed the animals when we're talking about livestock. We also see, of course, our gardens disintegrating in front of our eyes. It's really difficult, if, particularly during lockdown. I know that I put together you know, some really quite beautiful flowers so that I could look at them and then they would make me feel better. Uh, and I know a lot of people around the country are, are also in that situation where they've been looking after these gardens so carefully. Uh, and, and they are drying out and they do need that extra water. But we don't want to be using hose pipes to, and of drinking water uh, to keep those flowers alive. So it's a very difficult situation in that type of thing. People will be looking around London at the moment, seeing how brown the parks are and how depleted some of the water sources are too. Could London potentially run dry? So I live quite close to the River Thames in Reading, flows through Reading. And uh, going down to the river, I go down running quite a lot down to the river. And I've been watching the water levels drop in the river. And that's that's indicative of uh, there not being enough water in the system. And that water flows down the Thames into the reservoirs that feed um, the water supply for London. And we've seen the head of the Thames dry up quite a long way downstream. And that's quite unusual. And, and certainly I don't think I've seen it that far downstream before. 
And so the water uh, from the ground is not feeding the River Thames because there's nothing left. It's kind of run out. And that water then goes into the reservoirs, which feed London. So if it keeps on like that, if we don't get the rain to replenish the aquifers uh, and to, to run off into the River Thames, then there will be a water shortage problem in London. That's how it works. And is that the same for other parts of the country too? So when we think about rivers and we think about reservoirs and maybe pumping water out of the ground, that's how we get our water. That's where the water comes from. It doesn't magically come out of the tap. So we have to think about uh, the landscape and what's underneath our feet and how much water is in all of that soil and rock and in the rivers. And we can see across the country, in, in lots of different parts of the country, low river levels, low water tables so our aquifers where we store our water under the ground they are low reservoirs at a very low level which means we've got widespread problems with water supply how does this year compare to others is it exceptionally dry it has been a very dry start to the year and we haven't seen uh, some dryness like this since 1976 it depends how you measure it but certainly it is a significantly dry year that in itself is OK. You know, we, we, we do have some measures in place to deal with that in, in terms of conserving the water we have left. It is thinking about the future and what's going to happen over the winter. What happens if we don't get rainfall over the winter? That is what we're really worried about. Do you think we're prepared enough if the dry conditions continue? One thing that you know is noticeable is these huge amounts of water leaks that we've got going on. Um, we are pumping, uh, basically drinking water into the street uh, and letting it run off into our drainage systems. Uh, just, you know, so many litres of water uh, just disappearing basically from the system. Um, and that's really not good enough uh, in terms of making sure that we're resilient to these types of drought events where we don't have enough rain. And this is something that needs urgent fixing. Uh, and the water companies are very keen to say that they're doing better. And, you know, that's fine that they're doing better, but it's really not good enough, is it? Because we need that water. We need to be able to conserve it. And we need to modernise our infrastructure at a much faster rate to stop these leaks happening. And when they do happen, to fix them quicker and to make sure that we have uh, robust water mains to, to keep our supplies going. Let's go to the ads. Stay there to hear more from Professor Hannah Cloak about what other measures could eventually be brought in beyond hosepipe bans. Whilst you're here, why not give the leader a rate and follow? Welcome back. Professor Cloak, most people will have seen hosepipe bans making headlines across the country. Thames Water announced we would be getting one in London. Are hosepipe bans actually effective? Everybody should be doing their bit to conserve water. It is really difficult if you if you go out and you see water leaks going on or you see, um, you know, huge amounts of water being sprayed over um, crops in the middle of the day. And it's very frustrating to look at. But it is important that we all take this seriously. And I'm certainly not using a hose pipe already, even though we're not in a hose pipe ban quite yet. Um, because it's it's not right because it's drinking water and and really those those essential things that you can do you don't need a hose pipe for uh, the car can just stay dirty you know or my grass will just go brown it will recover um, when this drought has finished um, uh, drinking water conserving the drinking water supply is is more important and everybody should be taking shorter showers uh, and and really getting those taps fixed as well those are easy low-hanging fruit everybody can do this away from hose pipe bans then are there further restrictions that could be brought in yeah there's a whole tier of restrictions um if it gets really bad then you know we get standpipes and you have to go and collect your water and that's a very serious situation um and other serious things that could happen you know we might have to switch off some of the water uh, for farmers to use so then they won't be able to grow their crops and there's, there's a lot of damage uh, and frustration um, would result from that if we get to that stage then you know that is a serious level of drought i'm hoping that we don't get to that stage um, and uh, I would hope that if we take some action now with hosepipe bans um, and really implementing, you know, repairing leaks and, and conserving water wherever we can, then we can avoid that situation. How long could this all go on for? I know I'm essentially asking you to predict the future here. 
it is hard to predict when the end of this particular drought period will be you know there's a possibility we could get some rain in the next few months and then and it, it will all be over i mean we've seen before we've flipped from a drought into a flood period before uh, and and that could happen this winter alternatively it could go on for several years so we, this has happened before you get several years with a dry winter in particular not replenishing the aquifers and then we could be in a very serious situation indeed so I think one of the things about this drought, it's shown us that we don't really have this robust infrastructure. We, we, we are seeing loads of water leaks. Um, we, we're seeing restrictions come in possibly a little bit too late, actually, to, to conserve the water. Um, we're seeing reservoirs run dry. So we don't really have the resilience built into the system. And that's kind of the same thing for heat waves that we've been seeing. We don't have a, a robust infrastructure for heat waves either. We've seen railway lines buckling, uh, roads melting, um, and housing not up to scratch to deal with, with the extreme heat. And the same for floods. So if we get heavy thunderstorms at this, the end of this heat wave, we know that there have been floods. Uh, in London, there were some very serious heavy rain floods that flooded shops and homes. Uh, and we don't have the drainage systems to cope with these types of heavy rainfall. So it does suggest that we have a major problem with, particularly with our cities and our towns um, in dealing with these extreme weather events. And that's it from The Leader. This podcast is back tomorrow at 4 p.m.